Hello, everybody. Welcome to term three, first lesson of English. For English this term, we are doing magazines. Let me write a big heading. Magazines. Bold underline. Justify. Oh, no. Equals. So it's in the middle. Make it a bit bigger. Boom. Then we have a heading. Magazines. So we're going to spend... Sorry, we're going to spend this term looking at all of the different things that we're going to write to make our magazines, the different types of articles, the different types of texts that go into magazines. But that's coming later in the term. Alongside all of this stuff, we're also going to be looking at the different ways that magazines write and how they communicate these things to their audience. And we need to remember that the audience of a magazine are the people that are reading it. So if we're talking about magazines aimed at video games and people that play video games, we might see words like um, controller, PlayStation, console, even some words like poggers, um, Twitch, uh, I'm sure there's other things that you guys know about that aren't specifically coming to my mind, but we're talking about using the language that people might see in that. If we're talking about a video game based around, uh, a magazine, sorry, based around NRL, we'd see words like pass, football, um, the tigers, the rabbits, rabbitos, um, you know, the ladder, leaderboard. And if we're talking about um, magazines about gardening, we'd see words like horticulture or shovel, pickaxe. Um, I can't think of any others, but I'm sure Heath is yelling them at the screen right now. So we're talking about when we're looking at magazines, we need to remember that we're writing for the specific people that are going to be reading our magazines. So today, this first part, we're looking at an introduction into magazines. What are magazines? So in your workbooks or on a Word document, I want you to answer these two questions. First, what makes a magazine interesting? And second, why would you choose to read one magazine over another? They're the first two things. If you're stressed that you don't know what to write, remember that these answers, there's no real right or wrong answer. What makes a magazine interesting? Some people might like the fact that a magazine is really exciting and it's really colorful. Some people might think that a magazine is really great because it's not colorful and it's really boring. So in your workbooks, I want you to write an answer to um, write down these questions with the heading of magazines, writing out questions one and two. I will even number them for you and then writing your answers. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video. I'm going to grab my glasses. I'm going to ask you to pause the video and come back once you've answered these two questions. To everyone that laughed at my videos before, here's the part where I awkwardly pause and say, welcome back. Now, I've hoped that you've answered these questions. We're not going to go over our specific answers because remember, it's about what makes it interesting to you. You might like that it's colorful. Or you might like that it's not colorful. If you don't like any magazines, you might have looked at some other types of books or reading things, even online magazines that you might have in, you, you might enjoy. If you haven't had a lot of, if you haven't had a look at many magazines, there's the um, the kids magazine K Zone, which has you know, I always saw it in a lot of the different shops. So, again, here we've got our next group of questions. What is a magazine? I want you to try in your workbooks to write out these questions. Then leave a little bit of space. Leave three lines after you've answered the question. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to, to put my answer forward. And if your answer is similar to mine, 
then you're fine to leave it. Or if you want to add some extra details in there, you can. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video while you write these questions. Write your answer. Leave three lines. And then come back. So pause the video here. We've just started the lesson and we've already had two awkward pauses where I look at the camera to give you time to pause the video. <laughs> so in looking at answering these questions, what is a magazine? Some people might describe it in different ways because what magazines used to be are a little bit different to what they are now. When I was a young man, the internet wasn't everywhere that it is now. It wasn't very easy to connect to the internet. So magazines were something where people could read articles in something that was like a book and it had pages that were a bit thicker than a newspaper, a bit thicker than a book, and it was usually glossy. But now we can see that magazines also exist online. We have um, many online magazines, National Geographic, where people can go and read short articles. So while it's not specifically a magazine, it still kind of fits into that category. So what is a magazine? A book or web page, website, sorry, that has a, usually has a cover page. It focuses on one topic. And has many articles to try and entertain the reader. Now, what makes a magazine different to a newspaper is the word entertain. What? Sorry about that. The purpose of a newspaper is to inform. They're trying to tell us the news, specific facts, things that are important, things that have happened that everyone should know or they believe that everyone should know. When we're looking at a magazine, you might not have any interest in bows and arrows, but someone would love to know a lot about those things. So they would read Bow and Arrow magazine. Or if you love comic books, you might read the comic book magazine. And it has articles in there just to entertain, to make the reader enjoy what they're reading. So what are some things that you see in magazines? Inside magazines, we would see pictures, pictures of what the magazine is trying to show us. A lot of what a magazine has are the small advertisements. They're trying to show you the new things that are coming out. So even if it's a video game magazine and they're showing you the latest video game, so on some level, they're still trying to tell us why we should or shouldn't buy, buy that based on the pictures and the writing. So also going to add advertisements that I spelt incorrectly. So we've got pictures, we've got advertisements, we've got many articles or bits of writing. And the articles can come in many different forms. We might have, I'm going to put these in brackets because these are the different types. We might have news articles. We might have comic strips. We might have reviews. Or many others. There could be many different types of articles that we would find inside the magazine. So when we're talking about articles, we're talking about the different way that things are written or expressed. We might even see some games and or puzzles. So when we're talking about the games and or puzzles, we might you might imagine that there'd be a bit of a maze. You know, get the boy to the ice cream cone or there might be a jumbled up word and you're meant to find out what the unjumbled words are it could be crossword puzzles or it could be a whole different types of uh, different range of games or puzzles and finally we're looking at what type of a language do people use in magazines so when we're comparing the type of language and i'm sorry this might have been a bit confusing to some people the two different types of language that we have are informal or formal. When we're comparing the two, 
Informal is the way that we talk to our friends. We might shorten some words and use, use them in their short form rather than their long form. You might say, what's up to your friend? Or uh, rather than saying, how are you today? Whereas if you're talking to a boss or to someone that's someone that's a, a bit, you know, if we're looking at sort of work, they might be a little bit like above you in the ladder, someone that's a bit more important. Or if you're meeting with the queen, you might not ask the queen, yo, queen, what's up, homie? But you might say, good evening, your highness. How are you today? So when we're talking about informal language, we're talking about the what's up. How like how are you how are you doing? You know, those in those informal words. And when we're talking about formal language, we're talking about using the proper words. You know, oh good evening, how are you today? Ah oh, yes, I you you know, if we're talking about different ways that we could use them. If your mum says clean your room, you might not say, Ah oh, yes, mother, I shall clean my room. I shall get on it right away. But you might say, yes, mom, or yeah, mom, I'll do it now. And that's the difference between informal or formal language. So what type of language do people use in magazines? Is it formal or informal? So this question was a little bit of a trick question. It depends on the magazine. If you're looking at a formal magazine about a formal topic, you might use really formal language. But if you're talking about a really informal magazine, the language would be really informal. So if we're looking at suit and tie monthly, where they're showing you all of the different business suits that people can wear, it would be a really formal language in that. But if we're talking about um, Surfers Weekly, you know, cowabunga, dude, we're not going to be super formal. We're going to be a little bit more informal. So the type of language that we see depends on the magazine. And the topic you are writing about. Now, to finish off this first English lesson where we're looking at magazines, I'm going to ask you guys to do a small bit of writing for me. So in your workbooks, I want you, and you don't have to write this part down, I want you to write using formal language, tell me about two things that happened on your holidays. Now, most of us did spend the holidays at home, so we might not have the most exciting things that we did, but I'm sure that we have at least two things. To give you guys some, some things to think about, you might have helped cook something over the holidays. You might have moved furniture around the house or cleaned up or done a spring clean and gotten rid of your old clothes. After you've done your two things using your formal language, I want you to I'm going to cheat and copy this. It's instead we're using informal language to tell me about two. Oh, well, I don't know what I clicked on there. There we go. Using informal language, tell me about two other things that happened on your holidays. I'm going to hit bold. So in your workbooks, I want you to write this down and then I want you to work on answering these. Now, how many sentences should it be? I'm looking at four sentences each. When we're looking at four sentences, if we have two things, that means each of the two things is getting two sentences. On the holidays, I, I'm not sure, cook some chicken skewers. The chicken skewers had soy sauce on them and they tasted really nice. That's one thing with two sentences. And now my other thing, I, I'm trying to think here, I, I filled up my water bottle with water and ice. My water bottle was really cold, but it heated up because the day got a little bit warmer. I'm just trying to think of some things. I really hope that you guys have some more 
exciting or interesting things than I did, but using formal and informal language. Two things you did um, using formal language, two things you did using informal language. And we're going to wrap up this English lesson with these eight sentences. Ready, set, go.